Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. <clears throat> We're doing another portrait one. Can't get enough of this stuff. I'm having a good time with these. Uh, eventually we'll go back to the gestures and, and the sort of like really fast timed pictures because the um, portrait stuff is only really one facet of art making and it doesn't focus on hands or bodies or anything so you know we'll we'll diversify but for now I think we can do a little bit of this this is a fun one because it's uh, a a kind of wide angle, like a downward facing wide angle. And uh, it's not that forced of a perspective. It's an actor who has a very distinctive face as well. Uh, it caused us a lot of problems with Connery, so we'll see if we can, can get this one anywhere near where we want it. But um, in terms of the person, the actual uh, kind of, even the, his face normally is not that normal. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. That's pretty much correct. All right. Um, we're doing our thing as always, where I don't really say who it's gonna be until I decide that it's near enough <laughs> to uh, reaching the point where it is a likeness of some sort. But I will say that this person, um, more than all the others, all of the um, actors we've done so far have been, you know, they're very uh, sort of like iconic actors. Um, this particular person, who I will say is another actor, um, is more like caricature than any of the other ones we've done. 
so far. And that's saying something because all of those guys, like at the Brown Derby, they would be like caricatures of all of, all of the people we've done so far. So we'll see what uh, what we can get out of this. The fact that it's so iconic of a face is a help in some ways and a, a curse in others because obviously if it's that iconic, it makes it kind of difficult to settle on a on like a, a look. It's a character you'd see when Bugs Bunny goes to the bar and all of the, um, you know, all of the um, 1930s actors are there. I guess that's, I'm saying a lot now. Okay, let's take a look. This is a picture that's gonna um, be mostly defined by highlights rather than shadows, because uh, it's kind of like a pretty blown out image that we're basing this on, piece of photography. It's clearly front lit, you know, like in a studio or something, and it's got that kind of blown out look. All right, so maybe a little lower on the forehead here with the hair. Honestly, I'm not really sure that anybody who frequents Twitch would even know who this actor is. Or not anybody, obviously I frequent Twitch and I know who he is. But I, I mean, it's not exactly within the uh, demographic of people who typically watch Twitch streams. So I'm curious if anybody would know who he is even if they knew who I was trying to draw a picture of. We'll see. So with this one, at least we're being more decisive. There's not as many sort of nooks and crannies to the face like with Connery. So we're able to get in with our basic details a lot faster, which is nice. Okay, one thing I want to change is, I think it might be that we just want to take the whole head and use this tool and kind of just go like that. I wonder if that'll work. Yeah, it kind of did. Okay. It was just a little skewed in that way. Now, as far as this, we're gonna move it down a little bit. And I guess
guess we want to move the other one down. Yeah, this one is like um, funny because I'm pretty satisfied with the uh, resemblance pretty early on in the picture. But again, it's like, he looks um, the least kind of like normal out of any of the people we've depicted so far. Um, so it kind of looks wrong, unless you know who it is, I guess. It does look like him, to me at least. If I'm stepping back, okay, the biggest thing about this picture is this face needs to be a little bit taller. Chin needs to be a little bit um, lower. Something about it. the left side needs to change, but first let's work on the chin. We're at the 20 minute mark here, and I'm pretty satisfied. But you know, we can't rest on those laurels. Thinking that we're doing well might actually screw us. Okay, chin's a little too big now. Okay, eyes want to be a little bit larger, which is one of his kind of signature traits. I might be caricaturing him a little bit by doing it this way, but... keeps zooming in when I don't want it to. <laughs> it does. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to change is something I made his face a little too thin, so maybe we'll kind of move this out by a bit. Okay, let's get to work now. So we should get the um, outfit in just so that we have a general idea here. Of where everything else is going. No concept of where the neck is with this um, photo. We're also gonna widen his 
uh, lower area here. It looks like this might be a two layers, so let's kind of differentiate it a little bit. But yeah, it's like black on black with this outfit. And again, we don't really care about his clothes. That's not what we're focusing on. So we're just gonna get it in and we'll worry about the rest later. <laughs> the, the, I'm most satisfied with the resemblance on this one out of any so far, like out of the gate. I don't know if it'll end up working by the end, but it works right now for me. So really the thing that makes this particular um, person's eyes look larger is the upper lid that he has here is kind of the thing. We want to accentuate that from what we had. And I guess I could say who it is now because it, as I've said continuously, I think it it does resemble him to a good degree. Uh, it's Peter Lorre, which uh, most people who watch a Twitch stream probably wouldn't necessarily know who that is by name, but you've certainly seen him if you've ever watched any 1940s films. He's like a very famous uh, character actor and just a great actor, but uh, he's in Casablanca, he's in uh, like a million things and he's also very often caricatured or appears in like cartoons and stuff. like he's in like looney tunes a lot which is where a lot of people would probably know him from and then i'm peter lorry like that like he's like a german uh born actor i guess and he um he really wrote his own ticket with uh his place in hollywood Welcome, uh, Precious Stone TV. <clears throat> Saying, uh, I found the Twitch playbook and wanted to check out your channel. You happen to be live, so thank you for the setting limits for your streams. Gave some great insight. Cool, thanks for uh, listening. I'm glad you liked the, uh, the podcast. Anybody who doesn't know what uh, Precious Stone TV is talking about, the Twitch playbook is a free weekly podcast that I created to help you guys with your Twitch channels. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all the major podcast platforms. Again, I'm glad you like uh, like the show. Oh, whoops, this is the eraser tool. Setting limits, I forget which one that was. It was a, a while ago. But um, I'm glad you liked it. I think I remember that. That was like about uh, sort of defining what you want to do on your channel or something, or like making sure that you don't get kind of like pushed into doing things you don't want to do and stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you liked that one. Yeah, it's like um, the Twitch playbook comes out every Friday. So if, if you can imagine uh, the amount of episodes there are and it being a weekly show, the ones that are like, you know, near the beginning were made like three plus years ago. So a lot of them I don't, uh, you know, pretty, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> but the, uh, it's still going. I'm, I'm glad that I keep coming up with ideas for what to, <laughs> for what to say. And I'm glad you like it.
Okay, Peter's coming along pretty well here. We want to get a little bit of highlights in here. We don't want to make the same mistake as we made with Sean Connery, where we really saved the highlights for the last second and kind of screwed us. So uh, let's get the highlights in now. I just want to um, thin out his face a little bit. You know, once again, I did the same thing that I do with every picture where his eyes are just a little bit too far to the side to the point that he's not looking into the camera. Man, I have a real aversion to making these people look like they're looking in the camera. Uh, so once again, we gotta move it. Laura, he's still not really looking at us. Laura, he's still not really looking at us. We need him to be looking more upwards. He has a slight lazy eye on the left side here, which uh, I might be going too hard with. Let's get it. Let's just force his eyes to look further upwards. Yeah, well, that kind of works, I guess. I don't know. All right, we gotta start doing the highlights. I, I don't wanna screw up again. We're at the 10 minute mark, so we're still in a good spot. It's crazy how much the uh, the eye light will do to make it look like he's looking in the camera. That one little piece of like lighting, which is important to a cinematographer or anyone taking a photo, uh, it it really ch makes a big difference for like making it seem like the person is when you're drawing. It makes it seem like they're looking in the camera a lot more. Yeah, this is like full of highlights, this picture. It's an interesting um, scenario for this. This is probably the hottest part on his face right here on this cheek in the photo. Like this part of his face, the light must be coming from this side. It really kind of flattens out the features to have it so blown out like this. Um, which I guess is why we were able to get to a point that we liked a lot earlier, because there's not as many, really, as many uh, dynamic shadows in this one. Oops.
Okay. Yes, but he's looking a little bit too far to the left. Whoa, what happened? Something about me makes it really hard for some reason to get my characters looking into the camera. There we go, he's looking at it. I'm pretty happy with this Peter Lorre picture. This is just for me, really, this picture, because I don't think it means anything to anybody else who, like, watches these streams. But I, I really like this one. All right, we're at the four minute mark here. Four minute warning. I think I um, de-exaggerated his mouth a little bit by doing this, so let's add some of this back in. There's a really, really subtle kind of uh, thing going on with his top lip, almost completely invisible. And then with the bottom lip, there's kind of a definition right here. <laughs> Good. I'm happy with this one. a little bit of the shadow definition here and cut in with the highlights earlier. Yeah, like here. I would like to make his forehead hotter. We didn't really hit that as hard with the uh, key light, but it's really hitting him in the forehead and in, in the uh, photo.
I don't know why I keep laughing. Like, you know, Peter Lorre is not necessarily always doing funny roles, but he, uh, I'm just glad that I, I caught some level of, of resemblance with this one. Good. And good. I think we pretty much, I can't really see anything else I want to change. I guess his head here is a little bit, needs to cut in a little bit. And that's the time. I'm happy with this one. I might be like, um, drinking the Kool-Aid here, but I, I think we got this one. I think we nailed it on the likeness. Again, it doesn't, it's not going to mean anything to anybody who doesn't know what he looks like, um, because he's a pretty distinctive looking, you know, sort of bug-eyed actor. But if you look up a picture of Peter Lorre, you'll know who it's supposed to be. And I'm sure that anybody who looks up a picture of Peter Lorre will recognize the actor from other things they've seen, whether it be Looney Tunes or Casablanca or any classic movie. All right, so that's it for this one. This turned out well. It's the first one that I think I kind of said, like, okay, I'm happy with this uh, picture pretty much almost from the outset. just be hypnotized by the picture but like yeah I think we did a good job <laughs> am I so surprised that I did a good job on one going to do it for this one. Thank you for joining. Um, if you don't know who Peter Lorre is, look up some of his uh, photos, or even better, look up some of his movies. He's in a lot of great ones. Thank you for joining the show. Bye-bye.